Okay, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Nutanix File Storage Webinar featuring Okta, EasyShare, and Trend Micro Webinar. My name is Moting, and I'm a senior solutions engineer from Nutanix and also your host for today. Before we start the webinar, just want to run through some of the logistics. The presentation is about one hour. Um, during this presentation, if you have any questions, please type it in the Q&A box below. Our team will attend to you shortly. So please also stay until the end of the webinar if possible, because we will provide grab food vouchers upon completion of the survey questions. We will provide the survey link at the end of the webinar. Thank you very much. So here are my panelist presenters today. Um, my name is Moting again, and I also have Sean Lingam, who is an enterprise architect here at Nutanix. We also hey, um, hi, Sean. Hi, how are you? <laughs> okay, so we also have several guest presenters joining us today. We have um, Karun. So Karun is a senior sales engineer from Okta. Hi, Karun. Hi, everyone. Hi, Moting. Thanks for joining. We also have um, Aaron. So Aaron will handling um, business development and inspire tech, easy share. Hi, Aaron. Hello, Moten. Hi, thanks for joining and uh, happy to see you. Yep. And uh, last one, we have um, Mark. So Mark, who is a senior technical engineer from Trend Micro with us. Hi, Mark. Hi, hi, Moten. Hi, everybody. Hi, thanks for joining. Hi. Thank you. Okay, so with that, let me share more on how we can help you with the files data consumption in today's IT climate. So in the traditional working world today, our users used to go to the office to access the files relevant to the organization and them. So typically this was served by a um, file server or some sort of uh, network attached storage with emphasis on accessibility. However, in today's endemic and complex working climate, uh, the mode of consumption has shifted dramatically. With the data itself has not changed, we are forced to rethink the way that the users will consume this data. So gone with the days when they had to go to the office to consume the data, today they consume this data from anywhere on the globe and often with their own personal devices. So you can see that authentication, authorization and ease of use, um, access from anywhere and anything, performance, scalability, reliability, um, and also security are all suddenly become the uh, key aspect of this new consumption model that can no longer be ignored. So presenting a whole complete solution to address this important aspect of data consumption with partners like Okta, EasyShare, as well as Trend Micro together. We are going to share how these traditional um, file services um, can be consumed in a modern cloud-like fashion. So starting with how users come into the environment, the first thing that we typically need to address is identity and access management. So Karun today from Okta will share more on how the solution can address this seamlessly. So Karun, over to you. Thanks, Monting. So let me quickly share my screen. Uh, I hope the uh, screen is coming up. Yep, so hi everyone, my name is Karun and I am part of the uh, sales engineering team at Okta for Asia and my job is really uh, understand customers' requirement around security, identity and help them with uh, possible solutions and different like architecture patterns. So like what Motim mentioned, so we are looking at a world where uh, we are uh, having to balance between uh, convenience and productivity and security, right? So that's where identity becomes that key uh, engine to drive that uh, experience as well as the right level of security. So if you, if just to take an example, you would see that uh, the modern day collaboration, uh, the post-COVID kind of collaboration world is where, you know, your legal has to share documents with uh, different other entities. Your procurement needs to share documents with other entities. And, you know, all of this has to happen in a secure fashion, but should not hamper the overall uh, you know, business from uh, you know, taking place. It should not be hampering those user experiences. So that's where uh, uh, we at Okta Cloud, we focus on a couple of areas. So we wanted to highlight key, uh, three key areas uh, around how we enable that. 
So one is that we, uh, uh, the identity platform in general becomes a way to seamlessly access everything, right? So be it your file systems, be it your uh, uh, you know, networks, be it your applications, on-prem apps, SaaS apps, et cetera. So you have one way to access all of your applications seamlessly. The, uh, the other aspect is around uh, reducing friction in terms of how to get accesses instantaneously to your third parties, your partners, your contractors, et cetera. And the third aspect is around how do we do that in a secure way and how to enhance security posture when we are actually opening up to uh, the rest of the world. So with that, I'll just zoom into the first item, which is around seamlessly accessing everything. So that's where ideally uh, you should have the power to work from anywhere and you should be able to collaborate with your contractors, your partners, uh, other privileged users, et cetera. And you should be able to have a secure access into your applications, be it on-prem or cloud, uh, could be infrastructure, it could be file systems, could be APIs, and you should be able to seamlessly access those resources. So that's where Okta's uh, single sign-on comes into picture, where we provide that single layer to authenticate all your resources, including like, for example, today you'd see EasyShare uh, being authenticated against Okta before actually an employee or an internal user could get access to that. And uh, around on-prem apps or APIs and uh, so on and so forth, right? So the way we uh, uh, actually achieve it is using single sign-on and a host of other things like end one server access for server access, uh, you know, API access management for your API gateways and so on and so forth. Now, the next uh, item is around reducing IT friction. Even though uh, we have a security in place, we have enabled single sign-on, it's also key that you should be able to uh, cater to situations like guest users uh, or temporary users where you know, you need to give them certain time bound accesses etc so that's where you know the other aspect of automation comes into picture where you know we could look at uh, uh, unifying that whole identity management for uh, the organization and provide a seamless access to things like apps servers files or you know uh, different apis and so on and so forth and this we can do uni uniformly across your contractors, employees, business partners, and you know, other sorts of users. And that's uh, something that uh, everybody looks at from a, a centralized identity management uh, viewpoint. And the key to that is having a centralized directory where you could hold all the information around the user, including what kind of devices he's using, what kind of uh, you know, locations he's coming from, and not just that, what kind of applications he has access to. So that's the way we uh, kind of provide that ease of use uh, capability. Now, the third step really is to enhance the security and have a robust security in, uh, or authentication infrastructure so that you are actually letting users in in a secure fashion. Now, that's where our risk engine comes into picture. And this is typically uh, using our adaptive MFA capabilities where we provide a range of, of factors, uh, multi-factor authentications to our customers. But the key thing is that we are able to actually use signals, both Okta provided signals, like which user is trying to authenticate, uh, is this a known device, is, is, is this location a common location from which the user access to, et cetera, but also accepting signals from uh, uh, the, the rest of your security stack, right? Like you could get insight around, uh, you know, attack patterns from trend, uh, uh, we could latch on to CrowdStrike to understand whether the endpoint is at a certain level of compliance, et cetera. So we, we can actually gain those insights from those third-party signals. It's made possible because of our risk APIs, which we can use to integrate with all the other security providers. And based on that, we create this Octa Threat Insight risk score based on which you could now think about assigning high risk accesses, different authentication strategy, low risk access being you know, more seamless experience, et cetera. And we can really contextualize the access to your files, to your APIs, your uh, application landscape, essentially. So these are the three areas I just wanted to highlight from an identity point of view and where we play a part when it comes to you know, enabling access to uh, you know, uh, products like uh, you know, Nutanix or uh, Easy Share, et cetera. So with that, uh, I just uh, hand back to you, Moting. Okay, thank you, Karun, for sharing this great insight. It's clear that our approach to identity has to evolve with the fast-moving landscape today. So that being said, the way we assess and consume data um, also has to evolve. So Aaron, our friend and Inspire Tech, who brings us Easy Share, will share how files can be consumed in a simple and powerful way from anywhere on any device. So Aaron will walk us through this new model of consumption. Aaron, please. Hi, Aaron, I can't hear you, you're on mute.
Can you hear me now? Can you see yes, my screen? Now, yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Motin. Hello, everybody. My name is Aaron Tan. I'm from Inspire Tech. I'm the business uh, development manager here. So let me quickly walk you through my slides. Bear with me. Oops. Okay. Ah, a little fiddly. I beg your pardon. I did pay my bill. <laughs> okay, so a little background on the company itself. Uh, the company is in Spartech, headquarters here in Singapore. We have an office in India and UAE. Our development centers is in Russia and Indonesia. So we do have a suite of products. The one that I'll be concentrating today will be on Easy Share. Now, if you ask me in, to describe what Easy Share is in one sentence, I would say you think of it as a Dropbox, but ours is the enterprise grade uh, private file security solution, right? So um, just to give you a little background on Easy Share itself, it's about eight years old. The Singapore government wanted a private Dropbox, right? So our founders took up the challenge to build this uh, Easy Share for them, which is why Easy Share now is the uh, number one file sharing and collaboration platform used by the Singapore government agencies. Now, security of the client data is always a top priority for us. So Easy Share is actually built for security from the ground up, right? So basically, the clients trust us with the data while keeping their data secure, up to date, and organized. Okay, so the question now is, um, you'll be asking me, how do you safeguard our data, right? So we do it on three levels, uh, security, control, and visibility. So on the security here, so like as uh, Karun has said, right? So we authenticate the identity of the user. Your files are encrypted. You're now no longer sending file attachment. You're sharing files by the HTTPS link, right? Plus there's a host of other security, data rights management, and data loss protection features. On the control side, we are talking about uh, setting security policies here, right? So we are managing your user account. We are setting you your role and access permission. And on the visibility level, so basically what we are saying is uh, we are now tracking, right? The end-to-end -end user file activities. Not only that, we also monitor the IT admin activities as well. And on top of that, obviously, there's going to be a very comprehensive audit logs and reports. Now, where we differ from our competitors, this is under the additional benefits, right? Because this is built for the Singapore government, they wanted the most secure architecture. So we have got the air gap architecture. There are other benefits, like we have got a two-tier recycle bin. We also have got a true type file validation here, whereby we will prevent uh, file spoofing. Okay, this slide here, I'm going to concentrate a little bit on ransomware and why it's still a problem today, right? So when I say goodbye to file server, I don't really mean ask you to, know, to throw away your file server, but rather to discover how EasyShare can act as a protective shield and change the way the workers get their work done, right? The modern workers, the traditional file servers cannot have things that the traditional file servers can offer, right? They want greater mobility. They want easier collaboration. Okay, so today I'm going to concentrate on four areas. Uh, number one, okay, so in some organizations, right, some workers, you're still sending large files, receiving files from external parties using USB thumb drive, right? You're sending your attachment email or you're using a consumer grade uh, cloud solution. Basically, what you're doing is you're exposing the cybersecurity risk uh, surface attack to the hackers, right, for the ransomware. So with EasyShare, what we've done is we will secure your file exchange processes between your external and your, between your internet external parties, right? We use your ID verification, we do your trend micro later on, right? Um, do your antivirus scan, and then we can also sanitize your files with a CDR technology, okay? Um, Second point, okay, let's just say you have a ransomware loaded file already, right? Being downloaded onto a user machine. So with a traditional file server, right? The hackers will exploit the SME vulnerability here, right? And this is gonna infect the file servers and then you can move on to other systems and other machines as well. So with EasyShare, what we'll do is we will isolate that infected machine. And then we're gonna reduce the exposure of the SMB protocol to the machines uh, we're going to through using the HTTPS that I was telling you about, right? The HTTPS uh, web protocol. Okay, number three, 
Um, now remote work becoming the norm, more workers now connecting to their corporate VPN, right? So you're now creating a bandwidth bottleneck here. So company, some companies have no choice but to expose their nest storage to the internet. So what EasyShare will do is EasyShare will allow the organization to retain its layers of security uh, uh, against this external threat, but at the same time will allow the users to either use the desktop or the web to access the files from home. And lastly, the, on this point, basically, one of the tricky things about traditional file servers is that you have a bunch of files that can be deleted or moved, huh? whether accidentally or uh, intentionally. Yeah? And it could be some time before anyone even noticed this deletion, right? So then you need a tool to also monitor on all these deletion changes, and then another tool to go and, uh, uh, to monitor all these user activities. And then you also want a report that is easy for you to understand. So with Easy Share, we are now capturing all the W questions, right? Who sent what file to who, from which device at what time, right? So I'm capturing both the end user activities and also capturing the admin activities. And in Easy Share, you can also filter and search the activity by the username and the date. And then you can also export to an Excel. Or you want, if you're integrating to an SIM solution like Splunk, uh, you can export to Splunk for your analysis work. Okay, so this is a sample of our success stories. Um, as you can see, we do have a lot of government logos here. If you're in Singapore, these are household names to you. On the right-hand side, we do have some commercial customers as well, obviously. Okay, now I'm going to just quickly jump to the use cases here. Um, so this number one use case here is the Central Bank of Singapore. They want to, they got three pain points, right? So number one, they want to send large files. In this case, more than 10 GB. With easy share, there is no limit to the size of the file that you can send, okay? Number two, obviously for central bank, very important. You need to have the uh, audit logs and the traceability, okay? And lastly, for central bank is they want to verify the identity of the recipient before they allow the recipient to download the documents. I will demo this to you later on in the video, uh, what I mean by the one-time pin verification, right? Now, the next use case here, it's uh, MSIG, the Japanese insurance company. Uh, for them, it's not about sending files. For them, it's about requesting files, right? So this is as part of their customer enhancement program, right? So they, and especially now with COVID times, right? So touch wood in Singapore, when you got a car accident, you need to send in a video of your car accident, right? So before Easy Share customer will put it onto a thumb drive, and onto CD-ROM, and then drive down to the insurance company to give them the video. So with Easy Share, what they will do now is policy holder will ring the insurance company. Insurance company will now send you an email link ask you to upload the video back to them, right? So the MSIG can specify what kind of video format I will accept. Uh, MSIG can also say how big a file I will accept as well, right? So with this case, MSIG here has uh, basically uh, enhanced the customer experience and at the same time improve their productivity right, by reducing the, uh, the claims uh, processing time. The last use case here is on the Ministry of Education here. It's about collaboration work, right? So basically they do research work with other universities, other governments, right? So basically with Easy Share, you can, as a owner of a folder that you want to share out this folder with containing all the files to your team members, you can actually set granular access, uh, I beg my pardon, granular permission to, to your team members, uh, right? So you can say, some of you can do edit work, some of you cannot. Some of you can delete the documents, some of you cannot. Some of you can download the documents, some of you cannot, right? So basically you're going down to that granularity in terms of your permission. Okay, in terms of the deployment option, like in any solution now, it's pretty standard, right? So you've got on-prem cloud hybrid. So on-prem 100% on your premise. Cloud, basically I'm using your cloud subscription. Hybrid, I'm leveraging on both your on-prem and cloud. And this is our architecture drawing. So the one on the right-hand side, the enterprise, that's the one, fair to say, is used by more by the government agency. This is the most secure air gap architecture. The one on the left-hand side is more the standard architecture. So EasyShare is built on Microsoft technology. It's built with a three-tier uh, design. There's a web, app, and um, database. 
each tier can be scaled independently to add any load balancing or any redundancy as needed. Okay, my last slide here, basically to say we have the best of breed integration with our partners here to give the clients a holistic solution. Uh, Trent Michael is going to speak later, right? In terms of trap prevention, uh, Okta has already told you about their IAM and then Nutanix uh, for the storage as well. And last but not least, I just want to say we also have got REST API here. So basically we can integrate to any of the business systems that you have. Uh, with that, I've come to the end of my presentation. Back to you, Mutin. Thank you, Aaron. So Thank in you. summary, um, EasyShare makes the process of consuming files, data, simple and cloud-like. Feedback and, however, has to be intelligent and cloud-like too. So Nutanix um, basically is a powerful and very highly scalable software-defined NAS solutions that we want to share with you. So Sean from Nutanix will share how this software-defined NAS powers this new model of consumption. Um, Sean, please. Thank you, Moti. Um, give me a moment while I get my bearings here. So uh, we've taken something as inherently simple as a file sharing solution and uh, added some really enterprise grade functionality to it. Um, and our solution is a software defined NAS. Now, uh, you know, Aaron just mentioned that um, the Easy Share solution is also running a web app and database. And in this particular solution, that is also running the same data plane as the software defined NAS. Right? So, uh, EasyShare is powered by uh, Nutanix files, uh, which is our software defined NAS solution. Uh, I'll go through some common uh, use cases beyond uh, file sharing, uh, which you're seeing in this webinar, that some of our customers uh, use Nutanix files for. Right? So these are some of the common use cases. So if customers uh, having their department shares, uh, video and image repository, healthcare use cases, application data, uh, EDI, so the user profile and home directories, uh, software development, as well as uh, more recently, cloud native storage. Right, so these are common uh, use cases for a software defined NAS uh, beyond regular file storage. So um, on to Nutanix files, right? So one of the key aspects of uh, having a files environment uh, is to ensure that you can go um, from day zero to day two and maintain the environment very well. Right. Uh, beyond that, uh, you also have to add capacity um, wherever it's required. And that needs to be an easy process, right? So today, if somebody says, you know, add, a, add some space to your NAS, uh, you end up buying a dish shelf, you could add some drives. Uh, if it's a Windows VM, you'll probably add a couple of virtual hard disks to it and expand the storage. Right? So that's the normal process that we take. Uh, with Nutanix, uh, this is a very uh, seamless and simple process. Right? So first of all, uh, deployment, right? So getting to your first share, right? It basically takes 20 minutes. You simply use our provisioning solution to deploy the uh, software-defined uh, mechanics files environment. Right? So once you've done that, you can immediately start creating your shares, right? Um, the shares can be SMB, can be NFS, uh, whichever way that you're doing today uh, with your Windows file services or with your Linux file services you get all of that functionality uh, within 20 minutes, right? So you don't have to create any VMs. You don't have to do anything like that. The solution will take care of all of that for you. You just need to key in uh, basic details, IP addresses, names, and that's it. Okay. Once you've deployed it, you have to maintain it. You have to upgrade it. Uh, you have to ensure that it's healthy, right? So we provide a very simple way for you to do that uh, with our lifecycle management, LCM. Uh, it updates files for you. So once you've got it deployed, uh, all you need to do is just do an inventory. It will check what version of files you have, what's the latest version available, and then you can upgrade it. And you can upgrade this uh, at any point in time. Uh, it's non-destructive in the sense that um, if you've got it configured uh, in a trusted fashion, it will do it in a rolling manner. The next thing is uh, around custom monitoring and uh, the hardware monitoring. So the software itself, uh, the cluster, the fast cluster, you can monitor directly within the dashboard. Uh, you can see quite a lot of statistics, latency, CPU memory, all of that. Uh, beyond that, we also have integrated hardware monitoring for the underlying blocks and the underlying drives. Now, uh, 
scaling out is a very important aspect of a software defined NAS or any NAS pretty much. So we have uh, a very simple way uh, to scale up as well as scale out. So once you deploy a fast cluster, uh, you start with a minimum of three nodes, you can scale up. And the system will actually tell you this, that you can scale up. It's time for you to scale up, right? Uh, you can also scale out. So depending on uh, what you're trying to do, whether you're trying to achieve more throughput or whether you need a bit more CPU and memory uh, to handle your shares, your files, uh, the system will tell you, and then you can just do a simple click to scale up as well as to scale out. So scaling up is pretty simple. You add more CPU, more virtual CPU, more virtual RAM, to your existing file servers in the cluster, right? And this is done within the UI. Uh, you just use our wizard to add the CPU and memory to your file servers in the cluster. The AI will actually tell you if it's time for you to do this. Now, scale out is a bit more uh, different. Uh, you use the same UI. There's a scale out option where you can actually add another file server VM. Uh, and this is for more uh, throughput, more clients to access shares. Right? So you just use our one-click UI to scale out. Now, when you scale out, you actually get linear performance scaling, right? Whether it's sequential data or whether it's random data, your performance scales linearly. So uh, scaling out will actually improve your performance uh, depending on uh, what kind of performance requirements you have. Now you have all that data, right? Uh, in your file service, right? So you've, you've, you've now got this software defined NAS, you can scale out, you can scale in, you can update it easily. So you've taken care of the operational aspect of all of this. Right. But one of the major challenges we have in enterprise NAS consumption today is actually around the data itself. We don't know what's going on with the data. So some very simple questions right, that we often get asked, but we usually don't have the answers to it. Right? Who is accessing what files uh, or folders? Very right? common question that manager might ask or, or maybe the department head might ask. Right? Um, how is the data being accessed or used? It's another common question, right? Is it, uh, is it a CAD file? Is it a, you know, uh, is it a Photoshop file? How is it being, is it a video file? How is it being accessed and used? So the other part of it is, what is the actual amount of active data and the actual amount of dormant data? So we know that in the NAS, not all the data is going to be accessed all the time, right? So some of it is dormant. So how do we tell which is active, which is dormant, right? And the last, a uh, very important question is whether there's any unusual user activity going on, right? If a user is accessing a file 200 times within a minute, uh, something is wrong somewhere, right? So this is, this is the kind of behavior that you want to arrest. So we need data about data. Without data about data, we don't know what's going on with our data. So to that end, uh, we've actually built uh, into the system files analytics, right? So it's actually a dashboard. Uh, it's, it's actually a virtual environment that hooks into files and uh, analyzes all the data inside files and all the user behavior, right? So it's an actionable dashboard, provides an audit trail for the Nutanix files environment. Uh, you can see some basic information directly from the dashboard. Uh, you can see capacity trends, data aging, uh, file size and type, you know, top active files, active users, uh, some file activity trends, right? So this basic, data already gives you a fair bit of insight into how your environment is being consumed uh, in a nutshell view right but beyond that uh, we have a lot more under the hood going on right? so you can ob observe some of the activities that the users are doing what files are being accessed more frequently you know um, but one of the key features of any auditory environment is the ability for you to, to check uh, files folders uh, users as well as IP addresses. So often you have this IP address in your logs, you don't know uh, who's using it, uh, you don't know which user is locked onto that machine, you don't know which folder or files they are accessing. Right? So you can search for this, right? So it's very simple, you can search by files, folders, users, as well as client IP addresses. And you can analyze the behavior from this, right? You can filter by the time as well, uh, 24 hours, three months, from the beginning of time, quite a few filters for you. And you can download this uh, results that you get into JSON as well as the CSV format, right? So you can extract this information uh, for your further investigation process. 
but that's just the audit trail, right? We still need insight about the data, how it's being categorized, how it's being used. Right? So first of all, capacity. We add capacity, we remove capacity. We need to know how much we added, uh, when we added it. And this is what we call a capacity trend uh, over time. Uh, and you can see this information, right? So when you, whenever you scale capacity, you add capacity, you add up your NAS, uh, it will show up. And over time, you can see this trending information uh, in a graph-like format, right? So you can understand how frequently you add data, how often you add it, how often you remove it, how much you change, right? And you can go down to folder level, share level, uh, as well as categories. You can categorize your data and go by category as well. You can also understand your data distribution. So by size, one meg, more than one gig, you know, things like that. Uh, you can uh, it automatically sort for you what kind of categories these data is being divided into. So for example, your ISO images will be CD, DVD images, your installers or executables will be installers, right? So these will give you a deep insight into what kind of uh, data landscape you have. The next very important thing, and this is uh, often understated, is data aging. So often your data is uh, categorized into three main categories today. Right? We have hot data that's being accessed all the time. We have warm data that's uh, frequently accessed, but not in recent times. And we have cold data, the data that's not been accessed for a period of time. Right? All of this is consuming space. So the first step into understanding uh, how you actually make full efficient use of your investment is to understand the data aging within your NAS. Right? You need to understand if your data is too old, it should be tiered off, for example, to an external storage subsystem like object storage uh, or cheaper storage. Right? So understanding this is important. So you can see hot data, warm data, cold data. Right? So we have already uh, specified some uh, inbuilt uh, thresholds. Uh, to categorize these into these three categories. But once you have that, you will be able to tier the cold data to object storage. And one of the major benefits of this is actually uh, to reduce the storage cost and to reduce your data center footprint, right? So you don't have a NAS that's infinitely growing in terms of storage, right? Forever growing. You know that some of the data uh, can be tiered offsite into a long-term archival storage that is much more cost-effective. And in order to do that, the system needs to be able to categorize the different types of data. And this functionality tier it to object storage is inbuilt into the NAS. You can actually configure the policies to help you tier core data over to object storage. Now, understanding the type of data is also very important. Uh, this helps you identify uh, uh, certain behavior uh, when it comes to your users. For example, let's say you see CD DVD images that are empty and suddenly you see that spike up by almost one terabyte to two terabytes. You know that somebody has uploaded a large amount of these files and then you can perform some investigation to understand that as well, right? We also allow you to create custom categories to group your data. So for example, if you, if you have a specific file format uh, that's not automatically picked up by our system, you could create a custom category to uh, help the system identify that, and the system will then add that into the uh, data distribution landscape. This allows you to, uh, this is something that, you know, often gets requested where uh, you want to allow certain users to bypass this, uh, this tracking, in a sense, uh, because they may be seen as false positives by the organization. Maybe there's an automated system that uploads some data periodically you don't want to count that into this, you can blacklist that and it will no longer be uh, uh, viewed by uh, mechanics files and ethics. Uh, another major part is anomalies. So this is where you actually identify anomalous behavior, uh, weird behavior that could be indicative of a client machine, for example, uh, uh, being taken over by an attacker, right? So if you see delete operations that are op happening uh, maybe 500 delete operations within an hour from one user. That is not a normal behavior usually, right? So you want the system to automatically pick up such behavior and alert uh, the relevant parties that need to be alerted. And this is actually built into the system. You can define custom policies as well. 
uh, to ensure that uh, you get the relevant uh, indication of such anomalous behavior upfront. Uh, the behavior alerts can be on the dashboard as well as email alerts. So you can actually send an email body telling you exactly what is happening uh, and give you the information about which user is doing this uh, anomalous behavior. Okay. We also have uh, anomalous trends over time. So it will allow you to see what kind of anomalous behaviors are most frequent, which folders are most targeted in a sense over a period of time. And then you can take some preventive action to prevent such behavior. Now, data protection is a big part. Uh, we've got built-in data protection. Uh, so snapshots to protect the file servers. If there's anything wrong with any of the file servers in the cluster, to restore it with a single click. Uh, we can do disaster recovery of folders, uh, what we call smart replication to an offsite location, uh, both near sync and async. Uh, we also have self-service all restore, very common feature. Uh, where you allow your users to restore files and folders by themselves. Uh, and you can schedule this uh, uh, policy within the system itself. You can define the policy uh, for the snapshots uh, to allow the users to do this. You can also restore NFS snapshots from the snapshot directory. Right? So this is all built in, right? Uh, we also support change file tracking with some partners. Uh, so change file tracking is a very simple uh, uh, solution where whenever a file changes, uh, the backup solution only uh, checks with the file server APIs to ensure that the list of files that have changed is this list, and then it only backs up uh, or makes changes to the backup with regards to those changed files. Right? So this is very efficient. Uh, first of all, the backup solution does not need to scan your whole folder and all check for all your files all over again. Uh, then your backups will be much more efficient in a sense, right? much more quicker. So this is an API that we provide. Uh, a lot of uh, leading backup vendors have built their backup software to hook into this uh, change file tracking API for the Felix files, and you can perform these efficient backups. So that backup, Combo, Axel, Haiku, uh, some of the few that have built um, their backup solution to be aware of the Felix files uh, change file tracking APIs. Of course, we have security constructs built in. Uh, file server where you can't scan the files for antivirus inline uh, is usually a problem. So this is where, you know, when users upload files, well, from the front end perspective, uh, you have uh, easy share that can help provide such functionality as well. Uh, but often you may also be using your file server for other use cases that I mentioned in my first slide. And this is where uh, we actually have ICAP integration. Uh, and in this solution, we actually showcase how you can actually use Trend Micro solutions uh, with ICAT uh, to perform not just antivirus scanning, but far beyond that, right? Uh, to ensure that your whole landscape of data is protected. Another thing that we have built in is ransomware protection. So we have built in uh, protection for known ransomware signatures. Uh, we often update the signatures within the system. So this will arrest uh, any known ransomware that has come into the share uh, shares that you have created and block them, right? Uh, this is uh, not just applicable for policy use cases, but it could be any share that you have with an app server, even uh, that this will help arrest some of the ransomware attacks. Uh, you can also tier, or you can use one of the backup solutions that I mentioned earlier to back up uh, your file shares directly to uh, an object storage. We have our own as well, we have objects where you can have uh, one bucket that will prevent uh, ransomware from even affecting it. It's immutable, right? So even if all your, all your data is gone, you still have that one copy in object storage that's immutable. And as a bonus, uh, recently we've seen this use case more. Uh, Nutanix files is fully compatible with uh, cloud native use cases. So if you have a Kubernetes environment and you want to provide persistent storage for your applications, uh, Nutanix files is not incompatible. We provide our CSI driver, uh, and this can be deployed on pretty much any Kubernetes distribution. Uh, as uh, Nutanix is a very close friend of Red Hat now, and uh, we have uh, direct integration of Nutanix files into Red Hat OpenShift. So that's pretty much all I have to share on the backend Nutanix files software defined NAS environment. Uh, back over to you, Morty. 
Thank you, Sean, for the insight on the cloud-like files data consumption. But although all of this has to be secure and locked down. So how do we ensure this? Mark from Trend Micro will share more on this. So Mark, over to you. Hi, Mark, are you there? Hi, Mark, are you there? Seems he's on mute. Um, sorry, um, let me just ping him a while. While we're waiting for him, um, perhaps that we could just um, have a look at the video that we prepared for this. And the video, or we call it a demo, actually presented um, the whole bunch of capabilities that we put together for today's um, 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 solutions that we come together. So maybe sh uh, Aaron, could you help to share the video? Yeah, sure. Hold on, let me share my screen. Mm. Can you see the screen? I think we have Mark back already. So. Ah, okay, okay. Hi guys. Okay, sorry okay. for um, the, the disruption on my side. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so uh, Aaron, um, please uh, help to stop sharing uh, because Mark is back. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so on on after all that, uh, my fellow sharers, um, the things I have shared, we come to the portion on security, and that's where. Trend Micro can help uh, by using the ICAP portion, all right? And when anything that is shared to Easy Share before it is actually uploaded into Nutanix, it can be scared real time. Um, hi Mark, sorry, yes. can you share your screen? Oh, you... I'm not. Okay, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. No problem. Okay, okay, I'm back. Okay, so uh to, to, to start off from the beginning okay um so in, when it comes to security on trend micros and what we can do when it comes to users sharing things and uploading things onto easy share is that before it is actually moved into the um nutanix portion okay it can be scanned by trend micro real time by using the icap portion all right and so what makes trend micro easy uh so unique is that when we look at targeted attacks, okay, it always boils down to a few things. Things like reconnaissance, whereby attackers can make use of social engineering to research to target specific individuals or the organization. So if um, uh, you, uh, somebody in your company is very well known and very active on social media, then basically the attacker can make use of, that, of, of those targets to actually get into the system. Weaponization, whereby attackers can create a spear phishing email that embeds advanced malware in attachments or URLs. Delivery, whereby the email can contain user-relevant content, context and motivational to, to the receiver in an open URL or attachment. Exploitation-wise, whereby advanced malware can exploit a vulnerability to that person's uh, device. Installation, whereby it is installed onto the machine, whereby they can actually do a remote into the machine as and when they like. Command and control, whereby the uh, machine is already compromised and they can actually search uh, the user's laptop and environment and move from other pers another person user's laptop to another laptop. And therefore, data can then therefore be exfiltrated or encrypted for, for ransom, which is what we have been seeing in the past few years. So what makes Trend Micro solution so unique is that we can actually make use of tag, uh, sandboxes, right? Sandboxes whereby it can be customized. So we can actually use the sandbox uh, as an analysis server for enhancing the uh, targeted attacks protection and we can actually link this with other third-party products like EasyShare and Nutanix as well, whereby we are able to en uh, 
enhance the detection of malware, right? Uh, you by and by providing detailed analysis and reporting to the customer. With that, we are able to actually identify IOCs, which are in, in, uh, indicators of compromise and indicators of attacks as well. So there comes the question: What is a custom sandbox, right? Because everybody else has something similar and something generic. But when we talk about custom, so basically every single customer would have their own single uh, environment, own single um, um, golden image, whereby they can actually make use of with all their proper and individual applications that they are installing for their users, they can actually upload it up as a custom sandbox. Okay, So you have a unique OS, for example, configurations, drivers, right? You are allowed for detailed examinations of the results of executing URLs and attachment into this particular sandbox. And it can be used to manually upload it and to be actually to examine it. And with live mode access as a safe external connection to identify, analyze and of any multi-stage of any attacks. So with that, we will look out for notable characteristics, things like self-preservation, auto start, file drop, uh, redirection. And with that, we will then be able to come up with a diagnostics on what this particular file is all about to determine whether it's good or is a threat. So coming to the end of my presentation, when we use the deep discovery analytics, we can actually link it to many other products, uh, of course, other trend micro products, especially endpoints or like easy share for like third party, whereby we are actually able to gain uh, a report, okay, whereby you can share it with all other uh, products, should there be any blacklist patterns or IOCs as well. And if those products are able to do remediation, we are then able to actually give them the latest uh, suspicious object list and then they can actually do the blocking with it if necessary. Okay. And lastly, if necessary, so we are able to actually send all this information uh, to, the, to the SIEM through syslogs. With that, thank you very much. Um, Moting, back to you. Thank you, Mark. So now we will play a short demo video on the solutions so you can see how all these um, solutions come together. So Aaron, again, please, can you yeah. help to share sure. the video? Mm -hmm. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, this is the Easy Share Web User Portal. As you can see here, we are integrated with uh, Octa Authentication. Now, the first step with any uh, security process is for you to validate the identity of the user, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to quickly put in my username and password and log into Easy Share. The interface of EasyShare is something which I believe most users will be familiar with. It is based on the Windows File Explorer. So on the left-hand side here, you will see all the folders and the files that you have access to. And then on the top here, you will see the functionality buttons. They are dynamic. Depending on your action, they will appear accordingly. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is to create a folder. I'm going to name it Clinics. Next, I'm going to upload the file. You can either do the drag and drop method or you can use this button to upload the file. I'm going to upload a Word document. Now, just to tell you in the background, EasyShare is actually integrated with the Trend Micro Antivirus by the ICAP protocol here, right? It will prevent any malicious file from being uploaded. Okay, next thing I want to show you is how I'm going to show, uh, share this document. I'm a right-click person, so I'm going to do a right-click and share, or alternatively, you can use this button here. So click share here. Okay, I'm going to share this file to my hotmail address. Let me put my name and email. Now, EasyShare has got a feature called the OTP two-factor authentication for additional security purposes. It's basically for you to identify the ID. Uh, verify the identity of the recipient. So a PIN number will be sent to the recipient's mobile. The recipient will then copy the PIN number into the browser before the recipient can download the PIN. 
Uh, obviously, for that to happen, I need the mobile number, right? So let me quickly input the mobile number here. Make sure I toggle this off, right? OTP one time pin authentication. Okay, I type the message here. Hi, Aaron. Blah, 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 right? Um, now, obviously, you're no longer sending this as a bar attachment. It's going to be an email link. You can set the link expiry date. You can be notified if the recipient has downloaded the document or not, if you choose to. You can also set the number of times that the recipient can download the document. Last but not least, you can share this document with a view only mode. Okay, I will explain this later on when I logged into my Hotmail address. Okay, and let me share this document now. Okay, I'm now in my Hotmail. Let me click on the link, the email. Okay, you can see here, hi Aaron, the message, and then it says view this document, right? So let me click on the link. As you can see here, I was mentioning to you just now about the two-factor authentication, right? So basically, I need to click here. Uh, the pin number will be sent to my mobile. So let me get that and then input the pin number. Very. Okay, it has arrived. Click submit. Okay. Remember, I was telling you about the share with view only option. So, what do I need? So, let me click on this document now. It will open up a browser. And then, what you will see is there will be no functionality button for you to download or to print this document. Right? As you can see at the top here, no print button, no download button. Okay? And then, what also happens is there will be watermark splash across the document itself. So, this is what I mean by view. Okay, let me close this. Okay, this is the admin portal. Again, we are integrated on our authentication. So let me quickly put in my ID and password and log into the admin portal. Likewise, on the interface, on the left-hand side, you will see the functionality tabs here. I'm going to be concentrating on two things today. Number one is the storage management. Easy Share and Nutanix is integration ready. I'll just show you how easy it is to integrate uh, to create a Nutanix storage in Z Share. Let me just click on this task button, create a new storage. From this drop down, I'm going to pull up uh, Nutanix files, for example, put in the path, the username, the password, click save, and I'm good to go. Likewise, I can also create Nutanix objects here as well. Okay, so this is how you create a uh, new storage with Z Share. The other thing I want to show you is the user opt-in logs. So from here, basically, I'm capturing all the user activities, right? From uh, sharing files, requesting for files, uh, sharing a folder, etc. I'm also capturing the activities of the IT admin, right? So all the IT admin operations, I will also capture inside here. Okay. So with that, I have come to the end of our Easy Share demonstration. Um, obviously, there are more features uh, in EasyShare, User Portal, and Admin Portal. Do contact us if you want to have a comprehensive demo. Um, I hope I have now shown together how our combined offerings uh, can provide you with a secure end-to-end -end file management and storage system uh, solution. Thank you. Okay, that's a great video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you very much for joining the session today. So um, I'm going to basically share the uh, survey link here. Can you see my screen? Um, sorry, let me do it again. Yep. Um, so um, I hope that you enjoy the session today. So if you are available and feel free to just um, fill up the survey form for us, you can see that the link is sent to the chat group as well as the link here. And you can, or alternatively, you can use the QR code to fill in the survey forms. So for everyone who have filled in the survey form, you will get a grab food voucher of equivalent cash value about Singapore dollar 10 to 20 per person. 
or uh, let's say you're from Indonesia, you will get a uh, Tokopedia um, voucher as well. So um, if you enjoy the session today and you um, want to have some input for us, and please feel free to um, fill in the survey forms here. So on the, at the same time, our team here, the panelists here will stay here for a while more, about five to 10 minutes to um, address some of the questions that if you still have, you can leave your questions to the Q&A box or to the chat box, and we will be here to assist you. So with that, thank you everyone for joining the uh, Nutanix Files webinar today, collaborating with Okta, EasyShare, um, InspireTech, as well as um, Trend Micro. Thank you very, uh, thank you everyone for joining the webinar. Thank you everyone. Thank you.
Okay, I think that's the end of the um, webinar for today. Thank you everybody for joining um, and for all the panelists here as well. Um, I really appreciate your time. Okay, so that's the end of the session. Um, so say bye to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Morton. Okay, bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Jess. Thank you. Bye.